This is Annapolis Week on MarylandReporter.com. I'm Len Lazarick, and with us today is Delegate Heather Mazier of Tacoma Park. Thanks for being here, Heather. Thanks for having me, Len. You're, you're one of uh, 59 delegates uh, who are sponsoring the legislation on gay marriage, but it is a very personal matter for you. Tell us why. Um, I'm one of the seven members of the Gay and Lesbian Caucus here in the General Assembly. I jokingly say that um, before long we're going to outnumber the Republicans here in the Maryland <laughs> General Assembly. <clears throat> but um, my, my wife and I were married here in Maryland a little over five years ago with our friends and family by our side where we were making a pledge and a commitment to each other for forever. And um, that's what people do when they get married. Though straight couples also get <clears throat> a marriage license from the courthouse that mm -hmm. grants them 425 rights and protections to sustain that pledge to forever. And we're fighting hard to make sure that thousands of gay and lesbian Marylanders well, get that same protection. What's the problem with the idea of calling it something like a civil union? Uh, you know, why do we have to get fancy when we can keep it simple? We already have an institution that works really well. Marriage has worked as an institution for thousands of years. And um, for, for those who are opponents that say that what we're doing is changing the definition of marriage, I know nothing that we are changing in terms of the definition of marriage for thousands of years. Except they say <coughs> this institution has been a man and a woman <laughs> or a man and several women for uh, but there's a lot of differences in different cultures, correct? What, what the institution of marriage is, is a place where people come together to say, I want to share joys with you, I want to divide up responsibilities, I want to help shoulder pain with you, I want to spend my life with you, for better or worse. But it's also a matter of, of, of family and, and, and Gay children. Gay and lesbian people have family and children as well. Mm -hmm. And you're a practicing Catholic. Uh, you, you, your marriage was some kind of religious ceremony? Um, yes and no. Not one that was sanctioned by the church. Um, we had a lot of our uh, faith elements in our ceremony, but it wasn't at a church because, and this is I think an important um, distinction to make, the bill that we're trying to push through the General Assembly is only about getting a marriage license and the state granted rights that are associated with that. All the churches still have the opportunity that they have right now under the First Amendment to um, say no to marrying um, anyone that they don't want to have to marry. The Catholic Church already has an opportunity to say no to marrying a man and a woman who have been divorced but haven't had an annulment. They can still say no to marrying uh, two women or two men within the church. Does it bother you as someone who wants to stay Catholic that the church is fighting this so hard I think that um, to me, while I respect the hierarchy of the church, the church are the people in the pews. And um, what, what matters more than anything and is... And the Catholic Conference is actually the bishops. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been to uh, several congregations and statewide uh, conferences of Catholics that are in support of marriage equality mm -hmm. within within the church itself there's a lot of support because of our social justice tradition in believing in fairness and equality for everyone what we think is more than anything else there is a uh, a law written on our hearts that is uh, directed by our conscience and that that is the most important thing to examine in all the decisions that we make in life and the primacy of our own conscience is what should dictate us here and I know you've heard all the arguments, but one of the key arguments uh, by the people who are opposing this say, all these rights that they want to have, they, they can get in various ways under the law now, you know, through, through contracts or wills or, or other th things There's a like few of them that we can piece together, sure, well, at a lot of expense and, and time on mm -hmm. our side. Um, but why would we, why, why should we continue to have an effort of one by one passing a law that, that extends uh, these 425 rights in a piecemeal fashion in a separate institution that has to be 
um, that has different laws and regulations that, that guide it. When we have a system that already works so very well to protect families when uh, they need it most. How do you feel about what happened to the bill in the Senate? Are you comfortable with those? Oh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, our caucus collaborated with our supporters in the Senate to push through most of those amendments. There were some changes to the underlying bill that we felt needed to be made to um, accommodate a few situations, and those changes um, were important to make on the Senate side because when a bill came over to the House, we wanted to pass the Senate version so that that can be just sent you, right on you to the You want governor. to pass it exactly as it came from yes. the Senate, so it doesn't We don't need to ping pong back and forth. The only place it needs to ricochet to after us is the governor's desk. Okay. And you think you're going to have the votes in the House to... Yes, we are. We um, are a couple of short of where we need to be at this exact moment in time. But like any lobbying effort, we we've, we've still have a handful of folks that we think are leaning in our direction and will come in our column by the time the vote is made. And at the end of the day, Maryland's going to be the sixth state in the nation that recognizes equality and fairness for all of their families. Well, thanks very much for being with us today. And thanks for watching Annapolis Week on MarylandReporter.com.